Hello, lots of people ask me about my setup and how I film recipes. I'm a total amateur and I'm not saying this is how it should be done, but I thought it'd be interesting to say how I do it and what happens that you don't see. This is how I film once I've already spent time creating and perfecting an original recipe. My first step is to take out all the ingredients I need from the cupboards and make sure I've got everything. I know my cupboards are a bit of a state. I do sort them out every so often, but they return back to their natural form. People often say my recipes are quite expensive, but trust me, I'm living on quite a budget. This recipe does use maple syrup, but my maple syrup costs three pounds, 19 pence from Lidl for, I think it's 330 milliliters. And I'm using about a fifth of the bottle in this recipe. So the amount of cost of that maple syrup is quite small at the end of the day for a healthy recipe. I think people are too used to, well, especially in the UK, spending very little of their money on food. But food is so important that it's worth spending money, I think. Because if you don't have good food and don't have health, you don't have anything in life. Lots of my ingredients I keep in my goodie drawer. It's full of nuts and seeds, and it's quite a good way to save money. So whenever something's on offer, I stock up and buy a lot of it. So this drawer is almost always so heavy it's falling down. It's particularly bulging at the moment due to Christmas. I think lots of people only have nuts and dried fruit at Christmas. So come January, many are sold off very cheaply. Once I've got everything out of the cupboard, I like to organise it into piles in terms of sections just to make sure I've got everything. For this um, chocolate avocado lime cheesecake, the piles are going to be the filling, the base and the garnishes. It's usually at this time I work out that I'm missing one or two ingredients. And that's fine if it's the morning, I've got enough time. A quick walk down the hill into town to grab something is quite nice actually to get a bit of exercise in the morning. It can get quite stressful if I work out later on that I need something and I have to rush into town, make the dish while also rushing to make sure there's enough time left in the day for daylight to actually record and shoot the end result. Once I've got everything together, I like to measure it all out in the kitchen into separate dishes. Then it's just a case of pouring it together into the blender. Starting from this video, I'm going to be recording the sound use an external microphone to get better quality. This will allow me to do a no music version of the video. This is so I can put two videos on YouTube, one with music and a longer one without any music, just with the natural sounds. I know the longer ones won't be everyone's cup of tea, but in the evening they can be quite therapeutic to watch something just at normal speed without any music whatsoever. As I'm filming everything, I need to make sure that all the appliances and bowls and jars are nice and clean, so I'll buff off any watermarks first. Also before filming, I like to cut my nails and give them a good clean and scrub just to make sure they're nice and presentable on camera. Then I'll take all the ingredients through to my office slash spare bedroom. There used to be a bed here. It turns out I spend more time cooking videos and actually having people to stay. So I've dismantled the bed and in its place, have lots of equipment for recording recipes and guests have an air bed but it's a full size air bed that's lifted off the ground so it's actually not that bad the main board i use for virtually all of my recipes a piece of plywood so it's layers of real wood laminated together i think it cost four pounds fifty on one side i've used some gloss paint to paint it white but a bit roughly on the other side, I've used a floor varnish. No, actually it's not a varnish, it's a wax. And it's, it's what I've used on my floors at home. It's quite safe and environmentally friendly. It's certified you can actually paint children's toys with it. So it brings out the color a bit more. I'm falling out of love a bit with using this whiteboard because it's, it's a bit mishmash. It's not quite white enough to complement things, but it also at the same time, it's not quite distressed up, distressed enough. So for today's recipe, I'm going to use the darker 
wooden side. When doing the pouring part of the recipe, I use these two studio lights either side of the subject. They do collapse, but I tend to just leave them up. And they're powered by two LED bulbs. I think most are powered by fluorescent bulbs, but I just can't stand fluorescent light. And I know the bulbs are easy to break and they contain lots of unpleasant or not very good for you things in the middle. So I knew I would just break glass fluorescent bulbs. I didn't want those around. I use a Nikon D320. I think I bought it about three years ago for £180 with a lens. I'm using the standard zoom lens that it came with, which is an 18 to 55. And now I'm actually using a microphone on top. This is a very new thing because I'm starting to do all my recipes. A no sound version. Well, no, not no sound. A no music version. And I really needed better quality audio and able to do that and not just have loads of hissing. I, of course, always clean the lens properly before each day. I'm using an Amazon Basic tripod. I think it was about £10. As you can see, pretty much everything I use is basic or on a shoestring. But I found the tripod works quite well. Although this is my second one because I did break one of them through over tightening. But that was totally my fault and not understanding what bits tightened other bits. So I was tightening something super tight, which wasn't actually doing what I wanted it to do. I think most people have, well, most food people have an expensive tripod that has an overhead arm to give them, well, an overhead shot. I don't have that and they all seem very expensive. So my way to get around this is to raise the back leg a few inches, maybe two or three inches, and then counterweight the tripod with some um, old maple syrup bottles tied together, filled with water. And this seems to work quite well. It's not a perfect overhead shot, but it does the job pretty good and it costs virtually nothing as opposed to spending 200 pounds on a fancy tripod. I always record all of my videos using the camera's manual settings and autofocus turned off. This stops the video flickering as it changes the ISO or aperture or shutter speed or anything like that automatically during a video, which is not what you want. And also you don't want the zoom zooming in and out of your hands every time you put something in because it also just doesn't look very good and it's quite distracting. Now it's time to do the main part of the video that most people see. And this is actually the easiest and quickest part to do because it's all under lights. You just set the focus up, everything's measured out, and you pour it in. It may sound and look totally crazy to be doing this on all fours, but I found it's what actually works for me. So I'm, I'm carrying on doing it like this in lieu of getting more space to actually do this a bit better and a bit more organized, it, it works for the moment. Now that everything's all in the blender and ready to go, I take it through to the kitchen and just blend in each go. I generally try to take two different video shots here, one of the full blender as it's starting to blend and then one quite zoomed in so you can really see things moving as the blender moves it around. While doing this, I'm moving along the kitchen to get out of the way of direct sunlight because that doesn't look so good. But a big disadvantage with shooting under natural light here, as the sunlight changes and clouds go over, I can need to adjust the video and sometimes you don't get the same lit shot so it doesn't blend together too well. Please ignore the window, it isn't actually that dirty, the glass is blown and I need to replace it. I didn't show in the last shot me using my camera as a second video camera. This is obviously because I'm using my phone to record this video, 
but I often use my phone to get a second view on shots on a little tripod and also for often little shots like this where I'm showing a mixture blended it can be quite useful. My phone is a Samsung S7 that I bought second hand last year for a bit over £200 I think, £210, £219. Now I've set the camera up for another angle and this is just where I'm going to push in the base of the cheesecake into these little silicon trays and then top with the avocado frosting mixture. This is a pretty easy shot to do and you just check the camera a few times and then you're good to go. One thing that didn't work so well with this shot is the lighting changed in between doing the base and then doing the topping. So I'm going to have to try and fix that in post-production. But it's still, well for me at least, I'll be able to notice the difference. Although probably no one else will. My body's at a bit of a funny angle while doing this. Just because I'm trying to not block the light and not get in the way of the camera. It would be ideal for this to have an island. But you make do with the best you've got. These cheesecakes contain only a tiny amount of um, coconut butter. That's homemade coconut butter. I've got a recipe for that in another video. So they won't set in the fridge. They need to freeze just for two hours or so to firm up. It's at this point when I open the freezer, I realize it's jam packed and I'm going to have to hickety pickety put these in. Ideally, I'd put them on a wooden board, put them somewhere flat, but instead I'm having to pile them up on frozen strawberries, peas, and an ice cube tray bit that desperately needs defrosting. It'll work in the end. I just have to be careful not to mess any of them up because if, if they fall over or if they hit other things, the shape just won't photograph that well. Once the food is made and either setting or cooking, I like to make a start on tidying up the house to keep things clean and tidy. I've been pretty bad at this in the past. It is easy after four or five hours on your feet, just go and sit down and do something else and ignore it all, but in the long run it really is better to tidy as you go along. Unbelievably, up to now, it's a good four or five hours work. Actually, I tell a lie, I don't start any tidying up or washing up when something's cooking, especially if it's in the oven of the end food, it really needs to look good. So you need to watch it like a hawk and take it out the second it's ready. As these are going to take two hours in the freezer to set, it's a great time to start writing up the recipe and writing the post. I generally take notes as I'm doing the recipe and sometimes change the quantities of ingredients and add little notes on useful tips for the recipe. While these are still fresh in my head, I like to start writing them and get them actually down on the computer. What's also really helpful is to start editing the overhead shots of preparing the food while writing up the recipe. It just kills two birds with one stone and it's a handy reminder for every ingredient I add to list it in the recipe. Also, it makes a start on the editing of the video. The actual editing of the overhead shots is by far the easiest part of it all because there's no second shots, no choose. Well, there is sometimes second shots actually, but there's no choosing this and that. It's just clipping it and setting the speed. For my video and photo work, I use the Adobe packages. So usually Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom and After Effects. The YouTube money I make about 20 to $30 a month just about covers the license for this. I'm actually using a prime lens for the end photos and videos. It's a Nikon 50 millimeter one to 1.8 G. It lets in a lot of light and gives a good bokeh effect. And that allows you to have the background out of focus area, which works really well in food photography. So you can highlight the recipe and have a blurred background of the ingredients or anything else you like. I'm reasonably new with this lens. I bought it in October last year. I think it was £120 for a grey import one and I had to buy the more expensive one because my camera doesn't have a autofocus motor so you need to buy the lens with an autofocus motor. The first recipe I use this on is the five seed oat cakes and pretty much since then I've used it on every recipe. 
after a couple of hours in the freezer, they're just about ready to film. They're actually just perfect to eat right now. So a bit softer than I would have liked, but there's not long left with the light. It's actually a bit darker than I would have liked. So I need to try and get the photos and video end shots in pretty quickly. I'm using a slab of marble as the backdrop here. It was something I found when I lived in a disused office in East London. I've been using it for quite a while, but actually looking at this back now, I think it is time to retire it. It's just a bit too gray. And that often isn't looking ideal on the end photos, but it served its purpose. And it is quite useful for putting food on as I really wouldn't want to put the end results on bits of wood with flaky paint. My phone memory actually ran out while taking photos and videos. I do spend quite a long time trying several different shots just to get the right photos and videos. Apparently a proper photographer is supposed to take very few photos as they know what they want and it saves time in editing. I'm easily taking over 100 photos at a time just because I want to make sure I've got a few that are in focus perfectly and just the right lighting. I always shoot in raw these days just because it gives me more to play with in Lightroom. I'm not sure if the end results are that much better, but it just gives me a lot more control over the photos. It is always a struggle during the winter months with the lighting to get enough light to take great photos. I have tried under artificial light. I just wasn't happy at all with the end results. So do plan when to take photos and videos on days where I know it's going to be quite bright. Often I take a few inside and then take everything out into the garden. Try and get a few more shots where if there's indirect bright light, you can get some quite nice results. I try not to overstage my photos too much. I don't like photos that are really busy. And there's lots happening. So I try to only put a few ingredients that are relevant as props in the background. Here I've just got some cacao nibs in a glass bowl, an avocado and a cut lime. And I intend to just have those in the background, quite blurred, but also to give a hint of what's, to give a hint to tell people what the ingredients are to this recipe without having to read the full list. This is a video from the camera just as I'm finishing filming and taking photos. As you can see, the cheesecakes are very soft. So they're actually perfect to eat. But in terms of moving them around and staging photos, it's a disaster. So now they're totally melted, it's time to finish and just hope that I've got the right photos and videos. In an ideal world, I'd have made more. So I had some backups in the freezer and there's no chance that I'm returning these to the freezer to shoot them again tomorrow. So I'm probably gonna eat quite a few of them and call it a day. By the time I've finished taking photos and videos, it's about half five. That's nowhere enough time to edit all the photos, write the recipe, develop the photos, put together the three separate video clips I need and put it live by tonight. I have done that in the past and it just ends up working till 10, 11 p.m. and it just isn't worth it. After all, if you don't have health, you don't have anything. So I like to download everything from the camera, check that things are okay, then go to the gym or do something and call it a day for work and start again tomorrow. This video, I was expecting it to be the full two days to showing how I put together the recipe. And even after two days, it still felt a bit rushed. But look at my timeline now. I'm already on 16 minutes for this video on just day one. So I think I'll call it a day for this video get it live and if you like it let me know in the comments below give it a thumbs up or subscribe and if it's reasonably popular I'll do day two I've recorded everything ready for day two it's just a lengthy process to go through and edit it and this is the first time I'm doing voiceovers so it's a learning curve with that as well but anyway I uh, hope you like it and see you soon for the next recipe